So today is a what if. What if the Queen played Magic the Gathering? Well, I think she might use something like Queen Eleanor of Ruadak if she were alive to play it. She cares about her subjects and whenever you create a token you create an extra soldier to go along with the token. So to protect them I suppose. Pretty cool flavour. We even have King Charles or King Darien to replace her in case anything happens to her. And he can also pump your army as well. The whole deck cares about tokens and ways to create loads more tokens. Parallel Lives is key here. And also Divine Visitation turns all your tokens into angels. But if you don't have that out, you can always release the Corgis, which is obviously her favourite dogs she used to have alongside her. This can create four Corgis, four doggies that could uh, help her alongside uh, the soldiers that she can create along the way. You're looking to swarm your opponents with loads of token strategies. And um, yeah, check out the deck list in the description below. Hopefully this will commemorate her 75 year reign. If you are into the Royals of Monarchy, this could be the deck for you. Uh, don't forget to drop me a like and a sub. And also check out my Kofi donations page. You can donate anything, even a pound helps the channel. Why not? Or a dollar really helps. And check out my Twitter as well um, to help make me bigger, make me, a, make me famous. So yeah, let's get into the gameplay. Okay, so we're facing Joda first game. Let's see how we do here. We've got the Lanoir Elves into the north. Harmonize, which is just a really nice uh, way to ramp, get some value. So next turn we could go for Queen L and L. Uh, the Joda deck probably has a fair amount of board wipes. Not really sure. I've seen them use Urza's Runa's Blast, which would wreck us, but that is five mana, so we'll see. I think maybe this would be just a good time to go for Into the North, to be honest. Kind of just ensure we have all the lands out that we need to deal with Joda and his army of unstoppable anti-Phyrexian coalition, let's say. Replication Ring. Right of Harmony, okay. So, if we go for this... So you will tap the Lanoir Elves in case they kill that for any reason. Go for the Queen LNL. And then yeah, we've got a bit of protection up and also removal. So they do go for Joda this turn. We're just going to Fateful Absence him, I believe. White, blue, black, red, green. Yep, so they do have the mana, but we have the kill. So unless they've got Pact of Negation, I think doing pretty good here. So that is a, a clue, not a treasure, so they can't cast them yet next turn. Let's go for the Harmonize. Refill our hand. Okay. And yeah, we go for the Ranger class. Gives us a Wolf. And a Soldier as well. So she's really good for going sideways. The extra Bodyguard she makes... It's pretty sweet. It makes her a lot stronger. We don't have any way to protect her this turn, but Lisa. Oof, okay. Let's think about this. So definitely going to do that. So she's a 4-4. Four, four. When we attack, we can make her a 5-5. Five, five. So let's do that. And then if they do block, we're just going to give it Tamiyo safekeeping to keep her protected. Sweet. And yeah, we'll go for gate to the mana born. I think, and then we'll pass the turn. So next turn we could even go for the uh, ranger class, so we could cast creatures off the top. Don't feel that comfortable here. They've got three, four, five, six mana, so one more mana then to Joda, and then we're going to be in trouble again, but we'll see. We can draw into some more removal. That would be pretty useful. The right of harmony could be good, but we don't have a way to... I probably could have sequenced this a bit better earlier because it says creature or enchantments equals card draw. And we had the ranger class which would have given us two, but spark double. Oh my god. Two leases. So whenever our stuff dies, they exile. And a borrowed time. What are they going to go for her? See, so yeah, let's give her hexproof. Okay, and we can also draw a card with the scattered groves. Come on, give us something good. Okay. They've got so many blockers. Shalai is going to be awesome as well. So, play land. 
Let's think about this for a second. Two leases. They, they probably don't have a board wipe. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight mana. We could go four, four, five, six, seven, nine. Shame we can't do both of these and Right of Harmony. We'll just, yeah, we'll just go for the sideways strategy, I think. <laughs> so we'll make Queen Alanel humongous. And then swing in with a 9 9. So, well, 10 10 actually. So they can double block here, but we will kill one of their angels. And if they don't block, then they're at 6. So yeah, our field's looking pretty vulnerable to a board wipe, but that is that's always gonna be the case when you're using this style of deck. I don't mind if they double block. I mean our commander only costs three anyway, and then five. Both of these cost five, so Not sure what's taking so long. There's there's literally two choices they have, two logical choices. Bl don't block with any or block with both. Blocking with one returns it to the hand, I suppose, because of the way that Lisa works. <laughs> or if they block with both, they can return both. I think another non-token dies. Return it at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah, so they double block. They would return. Well, we can only kill one anyway, so. Why is the opponent, like, roping me here? I don't really get it. Tell me in the comments below who your favourite general is from Dominaria United. Is it an uncommon, a rare, or a mythic? Does a card need to be mythic to be the best? Who knows? I do know this. Queen Alanel looks amazing. The artist, Ekaterina Bermak, did a beautiful job rendering this character. I don't know... The character from the lore, but her cloak looks incredible. It's like it's like sinewy. It's always almost like made from almost the, her surroundings. Very cool style. Down to six. One thing about recording, which you might not notice, is if you if you want to sneeze, it's very difficult because there's there's only a few options. You either have to hold it in. Or do it, I guess, or I guess sneeze and edit it out. But my god, I've got a runny nose and a bit of cold lately, and it's oh, oh, it's ever so painful. <laughs> I would be a terrible ninja. I would be the ninja that would like, I'd be walking around the compound, like trying to be stealthy, and then I'd either like step on a twig, I would sneeze, or I'd like get a pack of. Uh, crisps out and start eating that really loud and then people would go what the hell they'd, turn, they'd all turn around and go we know you're there and I'd be like oh, I know I shouldn't have done this always reminds me of Metal Gear Solid if anyone's played Metal Gear Solid I think it was Metal Gear Solid 1 or 2 that introduced sneezing um, the main character could sneeze if he was cold and if you were trying to sneak around and you sneezed the guards would turn around and find out where you were it was really funny actually and uh, it's one of those little things you might not notice, but yeah, nice little inclusion in that game. Sweet. And we won the game because the opponent just died or something. We have the honour of playing a celestial body. I don't know whether it's the sun, the moon, Saturn, but we'll see. Stock hand are not really good though, so we're going to mulligan this. This is way better. Tender Shoot Dryad, getting this guy out is going to be awesome. I always found Tender Shoot Dryad's face was terrifying. It's kind of like organic, but it's just, I don't know, something creepy about it. If anyone could tell me why she looks creepy, that would be interesting. Like, you know when you just something just feels like it is because you feel it is, but you can't explain it? It's the same thing as trying to like explain why you like a certain song. It's hard, isn't it? Or why you think someone looks beautiful. Like, explaining something that's inherent to your very nature is, is really difficult. Like, why do you like eating fried chicken? Of it, well, I guess I guess something like that is because it's, like, high in salt, isn't it? The salt and the sweetness is probably the reason. 
But yeah, Tender Shoot Dryad, maybe it's like... It's kind of like dead in the eyes, maybe. Could be that. So we don't have any clean two cards we can do here. We can do one, which is sad. We go three here now, and then... Yeah, we'll go for Queen Alanel here. I guess that this works quite well next turn. We go Tender Shoot. She makes a Saproling and a Soldier Guard. A soldier boy. Soldiery boy. So yeah, hope all of you are doing well today. It's been a while since I've like addressed the audience because I guess um, I've just been busy and just not really thinking straight a lot of the time. But yeah, if you guys enjoy me addressing fans more, just tell me and I'll, you know, I'll try my best to talk to everyone in the comments below. Really appreciate anyone who has, you know, nice words to say or even criticisms, but... Oh, that's a shame. We'll never know why they quit, but... Yeah, I was looking forward to see what, where that was going. Oh, well. We are facing some proper oddball cards today, like Tanazir Quandrix is not one we face very often. He, ha he has been uh, buffed. He's a 5-5 five five in digital, whereas paper is 4-4. Four four. It's funny when you look at the revised card, they have the uh, arena symbol. Even refers referred to on the actual uh, ability of the card itself. Which is kind of interesting and kind of looks disgusting. So people often say don't use board wipes in a deck like this because we want to have lots of creatures out, but when you're facing opponent aggro stuff, it's going to be really important, so I would always say at least have a few. This deck has quite a lot, because what I found is, as soon as I took out the board wipes, I was facing loads of bloomin' um, token strategies, and it was just really odd. It's like the game knows. <laughs> okay, so they could have a way to pump the dog. Okay, they don't have a way. Alchemist is nice because it can draw cards when people search. Now they've got four mana open, so I'm guessing it's Filled Mystic here. I guess it... Or a counter spell. No? That's a bit weird. Well, they're going to have something with Flash, so I'm not going to attack. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah, so it's the Wild Born Preserver as a 3-3. Okay. Could have been worse. Could have been Frog Mystic. Shifting Ceratops. So we've got the ECD here that will come out. Probably kill the Ceratops unless they can get... Yeah, so we can get it because they've, they've run out of mana here. We are going to take 8, but that's fine. Well, I say it's not fine. It's just, you know, it's, it's going to have to be fine, isn't it? Okay. ECD. Kill the Shifting Ceratops. So... They're being mega aggressive. Normally, I would play a creature with haste last. That should be the last two thing you do because it's a surprise card, right? Card like I think Talazir would have been better to get out there because now they would have had. That's got trample. Jeez. Okay. Looks like we're going to be in trouble here. So we get out to eleven. We can revive it though. See our revelation. So this is going to be useful later on. I think we're going to just ramp here to just make sure we can cast the hour. And then we'll go for the elves as well. As a, Although saying that, this is 8 damage here. I don't know if we're going to be able to survive. Yeah, because they're just going to go for the... If they go for the Tanazir, that will double the counters on the Worldborn Preserver. And then it's got a Trample. As if it's got a Trample. That's crazy. That's 14 damage here. Yeah, they guess. 16. Yeah. Oh, well. Can't win them all. Yeah, if we lost another turn, we could have the, used the Arrow Revolution. But yeah, the Wild Bronze Preserver is just unreasonably good card. Stupid card. Okay, we get first against Shieldred. We don't have any white mana, but I do like the hand because we have the Wrath of God. It's a weird thing to say, right, in a deck that has loads of token strategies, but we're like a weird mix here. We have 
Ooh, okay, we can destroy that and ramp as well. See, we've got like a lot of aggro elements, but a lot of control elements as well. It's just the way the meta is. You have to be prepared for everything. It's just sadly the way the game works. If we don't get a mana, be annoying. We we did get one, which is perfect. But I think yeah, we'll go for the regrowth. We'll return the broken bond, because that'll be able to destroy the <coughs> reclamation. So this is this actually is really irritating because it can return all their stuff. Liliana the Veil, vale. ouch. Okay, so we, we all yeah, we'll probably get with the owl here because that's two white mana off. Go for the Garrick. And the Garrick can help us just get some blockers here. Ooh, uh... Go for two block. Yeah, we'll go for two blockers actually. That'd be good, because then also when Liliana makes a sack, well, if they make a sack, we'll get rid of the pup. We'll still have the wolf. They could go for Shieldred. We'll need a board wipe, really. The fact we're both on three cards is risky for them, actually, because, um... Oh, Meat Hook Massacre. That's pretty rough, actually. So now they can make us discard. Drop it. You know what? I don't care about the Broken Bond anymore. Oh, ECD. So that'd be good next turn. I think we'll go for right here just to draw a card. I'd like to get a land. This is my territory. Ooh, that'll be good. Something with hexproof. We draw a card, and it's a land, which is great. And then pass the turn. So if they don't make a sack. Then Gonti. Okay, so we can actually ECD the Liliana next turn, so it's not the end of the world here. <laughs> oh, so brutal. Liliana's not even the commander. This is the piss take here. So they've stolen an unknown quantity. Makes a sack, that's pretty predictable. Okay. So I think I've had enough of that Liliana, so let's just get rid of her. Yeah, she's so dominant. Sorry, People who don't I'm think that. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, so they've got Death Touch, so we might as well go for the one that just gains us a bit of life on the way in. And if they don't kill this, we trade with the Gonti, so. Swinging in. So we lose a life. Okay, fine. Woe Strider. So we do have the Wrath of God. So I'm wondering if we just save that for. And if they kill Garrick, we can return later on. So let's just. Make the Oketra a bit cheaper. So we could, so if we board wipe now, they're just going to return it back with a threat and reclamation. So I think we go for the Oketra first. Okay, so we've got a number of nice things in the graveyard to return if... So they're going to get back the Gonti. Yikes. Okay. Demon's Disciple. That's pretty rough, especially with the reclamation. Oh, that's so rough. They can do that so many times. Yeah, we'll put it back into the deck. So when Garrick dies this turn, we can revive him with the ECD. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit rough, to be honest. Remember, you reap what you Not sow. happy about this. Yeah, we'll get back the Garrick just because he can give us more creatures. Okay, for loyalty. <clears throat> Wipe the field. So obviously they can return one of these back with the reclamation but this is this is something I really wish I actually did kill but there you go they will take their next turn to redeploy their stuff I mean they've got Gonti I'll leave your boats in my wake. Oh, if any one of these could destroy enchantments that would be great I think we'll gain some life because if they do get shielded at eventually we're going to want to just make sure that we can hang in there so they're going to get back this okay so they're going to make us sack the truffle snout i suppose if they do okay they can do this every single turn which is absolutely ludicrous at the cost of two life 
So what do we do? Not really sure. Definitely want to play a land. Three, four, five, six. Right of Harmony only gives us one thing. Yeah, we'll go for the Queen Eleanor. We also have a way to give ourselves Hexproof Indestructible. <clears throat> so yeah, let's make a dude. Oh, fantastic. So Ferocious Pop is just going to be a really nice way to just power up our army. Gives us a bit of protection versus sacrifice, which is if they're obsessed with going for the Demon's Disciple, then they're going to be in for a nice treat. We've got the Yanti Scale Shield. Oh, we beat them. That feels incredible. They were being proper cheeky there, weren't they? They thought they got that one in the bag. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Don't forget to check out more of my videos and also my Kofi donations page. You can donate as little or as much as you want.